So with all of the news coming out about this Marjorie Taylor Greene, and, and look, you know, this is stuff that should have come out during the campaign. Oh, that's right. There wasn't really much of a campaign. And she got on the on the Republican side because I guess no, either nobody else uh, filled out the paperwork right or she just, uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember. But somehow she got thrown. I got to wonder if she's going to stay. But we got her for two years. Uh, but two House Democrats today have introduced a censure resolution against her. Uh, those representatives, Nakima Williams and Sarah Jacobs, um, citing the fact that, uh, well, she she, uh, I guess, said that, you know, Nancy Pelosi is uh, guilty of treason and should suffer death or be in prison. Yeah, that's that's someone sitting in Congress and here to share some thoughts on our latest bit of crazy in Congress. Our good friend Scott Dworkin, he's the co-founder of the Democratic Coalition, also host of the wonderful Dworkin Report. Scott, thanks for taking time for us. Hey, Rick, how are you? Uh, I'm good. I, I got to tell you, you know, I miss the good old days of the whoever was crazy in Congress was at least fun. I miss Michelle Bachman uh, because I mean, she was crazy, but she was like a fun kind of crazy. You know, she wasn't like a I'm going to shoot you in the head kind of crazy like this woman. Yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene is, uh, as we've investigated her o- over the past few weeks and especially over the past few days as we've been re- releasing more video, um, it's apparent that she's an accomplice to the riots. She's an accomplice um, very clearly. She had a meeting at the White House in the weeks leading up to uh, January 6th. She promoted January 6th at a constant. She invited people to the the rally that, that, that turned into a riot. Um, she then stayed with that messaging lane the day after she did an interview we just released today. Um, and, and in that interview, she did say that the fight is just beginning. And, and you know, this is not a person that we want in, in Congress, just as Americans. It has nothing to do with her political party, which uh, obviously she's on the fringe as it is. Um, but, you know, if Kevin McCarthy wants to play this game, that's fine. But I can tell you this, the videos are just going to get worse. And, and one of the videos we uncovered, she's, she was assigned to the Education Committee. And she uses the R word in regards to uh, disabilities. And it just was so, it, she's referring to members of Congress when she says this, and it's before she was elected, but it's just a, another thing that to add to the pile. And so it's just, it's not fitting, fitting for Congress, <laughs> even though, even this Congress, you know, with so many Republicans that s- stood up and stopped the steal and whatnot. Um, but she is one of the one of Trump's biggest accomplices because again she was at the White House meeting about January 6th and she was still pushing the big lie you know afterwards and still is n- now today. Yeah, one of the places I'll push back on is you say she's on the fringe. Uh, I, I I think by them being silent of right. of her behavior of her words, I I don't think she's on the fringe. I think she is who they are. Only she's dumb enough to say out loud what they say behind closed doors. Yeah, there's a there's a long 30 minute kind of documentary style on a QAnon where she explains plain speaks the uh, the whole conspiracy theory and tries to you know be like well I don't I don't know I don't know and throw it out there and so it, this is years and years of a person that has bought into the conspiracy theory but it's been it's less more of her buying into what everything stands for it's more of her exploiting uh, this and exploiting these people that are fo- falling for this conspiracy, that are falling for uh, that. And, and, you know, I think the Republican Party has a responsibility to stand up against that. And as we've seen from the state parties recently, that's just not going to happen. There's corruption that is, uh, that, that's spread to the state parties. I mean, you look at Arizona, they want a recount of the leadership votes because they don't believe that Kelly Ward won. And she's like, oh, you know, we'll come up with a new way for us to recount votes. I'm like, how many votes do you have when you vote for the party chair? It's not it's like a few dozen. it's not going to be like more than hundreds. And it's probably on a computer. Like, think about what we're doing right now. So it's it's really uh, it, it is unfathomable. I like to say fringe because even though it is normalized by the Republican Party, I don't want to normalize it. And that's why I, I still no, refer- it's an excellent point. But, you know, here my my point is, is that the current Republican Party is the fringe now. Yes, um, so, so normalizing that is, 
is I'm hoping that there are some good, decent Republicans who who don't identify with Green or Boebert or any or McCarthy or any of these people who are, in your words, out on the fringe. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll bring the and I've been saying this for a lot of years now, that they'll bring their party somewhere back to the same line. Well, reality is going to set in very quickly here. Uh, the, the seriousness and gravity of everything starts on Tuesday night of next week when Officer Brian Sicknick is going to sit in the rotunda of the Capitol um, through the night, and then there will be a congressional ceremony for him uh, the next day on Wednesday, uh, and then he'll be buried at Arlington because he's a veteran. Um, so, I mean, like, this is going to be a full-fledged funeral and a full-fledged viewing, and um you know, I think it's important for people to see the gravity of what happened and also talk about that. And so going into Wednesday, we'll hopefully be able to, you know, dig in more about, about Mr. Officer Sicknick and his family and, and his friends and tell his story so that we can get some people, we can humanize this event and then actually pay respect to him. And what I've been saying lately is, you know, if Trump had not said these things, if he had not planned this rally, if he had not funded this rally, if he had not told people that he was walking with them to the Capitol where they had impunity and they thought that he had led the charge inside the Capitol and they were just following him, or uh, if he had not done any of this, or, or maybe even just one of the things, if he had not done, um, Officer Brian Sicknick would be alive now. And that that's just you you can you can assume based on all the variables. Same thing with the four other people who died, um, who are his supporters, and then two other uh, police officers who committed suicide since then. And so there, there's you know at that point you have um, seven dead bodies, three of them Capitol police officers. You have 140 different uh, uh, officers who have gotten brain damage from it, broken bones. Um, throughout the body, um, you know, beaten into submission um, with flagpoles and just disgusting, atrocious acts. And so, again, I think people people are uh, Republican Party is trying. They try to push it off. They try to not face reality. But with that and then the impending trial, which will be explicit with no real defense besides it's not not constitutional, something along those lines. And he didn't cause it. But they're not going to be able to say, like, <laughs> he had nothing to do with it. And so it's it's reality is going to sink in very quickly and American people won't have a distraction of Donald um, and they'll have to everybody's going to be focused and honed in on, on this this trial. And I don't think that based on, you know, having uh, the, the impeachment crew that we have, I, I, I don't think that they're beatable. Um, but but I will say, um, you know, as we move into this and we learn more about what happened and the truth about what happened and more things are revealed, I think that there is a very distinct possibility of conviction. And if McConnell chooses to convict and he votes that way, that means he will be convicted because there's no way that McConnell would vote without the votes behind him. No, I, I agree with you on that. I, I just don't see the Republican Party uh, having, this, the, having the spine to do it. I just don't. Uh, but yeah. you, are, I, I do agree with you if McConnell votes to convict that it's over. Uh, yeah. he, he is the bellwether. And, and if he does, it's over for him. But I just don't see them doing that. It just depends on, you know, how it's presented. Again, I, I trust uh, reps, uh, you know, uh, Raskin and Swalwell, obviously a good friend uh, of yours. And, and so I, I, I think the entire uh, team, they, they know what they're doing. And they also have some practice at this. Um, you know, a lot of them were heavily involved with the impeachment um, last time. Now, this is this is more more serious. And I think when you go over the explicit details of, you know, here's the video of this person getting shot because they were doing X, Y and Z. And they only did this because of Trump. And then here's this person who went in here and, you know, kicked his feet up in Speaker Pelosi's desk. And they only did this because citing court documents because they say that Trump told them to. And, and so you start going through this all and it starts to stack up and people are going to this is this is going to be a big bet. This is where your political future lies. And so if you want to, this isn't going to be a vote whether or not you're Republican. It's a vote whether or not you're American. And, and so you get this is the country over party vote. And that's why they didn't want it. That's why they didn't want an impeachment trial. That's why they didn't want us to confront them with it, because they don't want to be reminded of it. They want to do what, do what they do with school shootings, which is just, you know, steamroll over it. And, oh, 
thoughts and prayers. Well, sorry, buddy, that's not going to work this time. And, and I think that they know um, what, what's coming in regards to the reality check that that starts really this week with with Officer Sicknick lying in, in the rotunda. Yeah, we're going to see in the coming days whether I'm right or other people are right. Uh, I think this should have been over by now. I think we should have we should have you know should have gone you know four four oh one in the morning on the day after it happened. Uh, we okay. should have had articles of impeachment. Uh, we should have immediately been running on this. But I have yeah. other people who have said no, no, Rick, you're wrong. Uh, we shouldn't have done that haste. We want to draw this out so we can, as you've said, we want to have the funeral. We want to have all of this evidence so that the American people can see it. Uh, I, I got to be honest. I don't think uh, the people who supported Trump or any of the Republicans care about the evidence or care about um, about holding him accountable. So I don't see that it's going to matter. Uh, but I, I'm curious your thoughts. Uh, it, it just depends. That they'll have to act like they care. And they'll have to act like they're offended. They'll have to at least act like it. And, and so that enough may be enough for them to be turning on Trump. But, it, you know, what the House says doesn't matter. What ho House reps say and, and, you know, what Nunes says and Jim Jordan, they're not in the Senate. Nothing that they say is relevant to any of this. Right. It's 17 uh, senators that we need to convict. Correct. And I and it, it, there is a possibility. I can say, you know, we were very optimistic Come the last time when it came to removal, obviously, the Democratic coalition helped run that effort, uh, helped run both impeachment efforts. Uh, you know, with, with this re not removal, but conviction and ban from from running again, um, we we are much more likely for conviction. I mean, it, it, I, I remember when pe remember when people told me in 2017, don't waste your time on impeachment. Obviously, that was not a bad quest to, to take. Uh, but, you know, it takes a while. And. And just based on what I'm seeing, there are a lot of maybes and I don't knows yet. And it's not from the Democratic column. So, you know, I, I would be surprised if there wasn't at least consideration by a lot of people. But again, there's there's going to be a slate of 10 or so Republicans that are not going to vote unless they have the votes for sure. And so that's going to be the trick it is like, you, you know, are they going to pass a threshold where, it's just too much and they just kind of tap out they're like okay they, like i didn't know about this evidence or video we didn't know and there's going to be a lot of that i can tell you for a fact and and it you know they've been able to compile this stuff for for a while now and work in coordination with our intelligence services because we have the senate and the house and the white house now um, so we, we get access to documents and videos and files and, and it's a completely different world upside down. Um, and so I think, I think again, reality, uh, they don't have any excuse for this. And a lot of them are complicit with it and, and belong in prison with Trump. Um, but you know, I think that we should prosecute him from every angle possible for every single crime. And I, I've said, you know, since day one that we should have impeached him on day one. We should have not tolerated any lie. We should have impeached him for every single lie, every single uh, crime that he committed. And we should never tolerate it. I would never tolerate it with President Biden or, or Vice President Harris. I would never tolerate them lying. And, and to date, you know, they haven't gone out and done like even one brazen lie, right. like none. Um, and they have a press secretary who is, uh, uh, you know, brilliant and uh, obviously a, a a person that uh, is is just phenomenal. Miss uh, Saki is just is is really good at doing her job, and um, it, it's it's refreshing. But I'm still in that part where um, before unity uh, comes accountability. Yeah, I'm with you. And, you know, yeah. let me. I got to go back to something you said though, because you, uh, I guess you have a lot more faith in uh, in in the people in the Senate than I do. Uh, I look at this purely from the political the political calculus game. I really don't think any evidence you show these guys are going to matter unless you can you can show them how it's going to either help or hurt them politically. I mean, the argument that I would make is uh, getting Trump out of your party and not allowing him to run again so he can he can do a third party race against you uh, is, is a good thing for you politically. Uh, getting him away from the, the, the being the head of a third party run or any of that is good politically. Uh, I, I think you have to make something of that argument uh, more than it's right or wrong, because we've seen repetitively, Scott, that they don't seem to care about right or wrong. 
Yeah, they're going to choose really early on in the trial uh, whether or not they're going to push to convict because you'll see the, the messaging tilt one way or the other. And that's going to be McConnell's choice. And based on the evidence that they know is going to be presented, because I'm sure that they're going to have to present this evidence to to them beforehand or, or something along those lines where they'll have access to it. They know what's going to be presented. Uh, and, and when I think when they see that, they'll make that game time decision. But I, I don't think the problem here is uh, we've always had the issue of momentum where um, we would have momentum in regards to a, a messaging to to people and, and they'd understand and it would build and they'd follow that story. Now all of a sudden Trump would tweet something out and it's like, Oh, wait, 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 wait. And, to, and it just boggles it all. They don't have that anymore. No. That's not a weapon anymore. And I think that's going to be the biggest detriment to them. They don't have the social media presence they used to, which was fake in the first place. So I, I, I don't think, I, I think that it's, uh, I, I'm optimistic because I have to be, because I, I'm not going to work on an effort that I don't believe in. And I will tell you this, I would not work on it if I didn't think that we had the the potential for the votes. Do I think that they'd, they'd convict? You know, I, I'm not as optimistic about it as it like, you know, 50-50 or anything like that, but it's still possible and we have to make a vested effort and present our case to, to the American people and make sure the American people correspond with their senators, what how they feel and where they should vote on that. Yeah, it's like anything. You got to push them. You got to get out. You got to be loud. You've got to let them hear you call. Never uh, got right. impeached. All of that. We never got impeached ever. We would have never got impeached ever if we didn't push. I remember I, I called for his impeachment before he actually was sworn in. And, and it just because I knew he was going to be in breach of it. And, and you know, if we don't talk about it, if we don't push it, push it out into the universe, then people wouldn't have been able to impeach him for the crimes he committed. Because if we weren't talking about it, a constant is impeaching for this impeach. Like we got to set the bar. And, and I think as we reset things here again, the tragic reality of things will set in. And I think that momentum in regards to the American people waking up and realizing how serious this is or being reminded of how serious it is, they're going to want these the people who are co-conspirators and accomplices out of congress and so whether or not they stay you know that's the republican party they you know we can i i'm happy to support a republican challenger in a heavy red district to run against people like marjorie taylor green and i'm sure that we can come up with a bipartisan project with the lincoln project and, and some of our partners like midas touch there you go um, good stuff as always scott i appreciate the time fantastic stuff i hope people keep following the work that you're doing you're doing good stuff thanks so much Thanks. Our good friend Scott Dworkin. I'll uh, take a quick break. Right back. Stick around. Remembering that united we bargain, divided we beg. Rick Smith.